to. So I'm going to be I'm recording this, and so um, what you text and what you see in the side here um, will come through. And so uh, again, our website is where you can get these. And if you mouse over my courses, there's a lot of stuff here, which some of this probably will go away as we move further. Um, away from the migration and into the full implementation. But you'll see um, a link that says Quick Guides, and then off of that also is the Recorded Quick Guide Webinars. So that's where I'm going to be putting these recordings. If I click on this, this is where all of the Quick Guides reside. And in fact, I will go ahead and put that into the text area. Um, so right now, I'm going to be doing the attendance today. Um, there are, I've done some uh, quick guide webinars on the email. I'm going to be finishing those. Groups will be next week. Um, and we're going to, as we start adding more quick guides, they'll be listed here. We may not have the quick guide webinars for them yet, but as we build them, they will be listed right here. So I already started building ones on the gradebook. And the quick guides, um, which you, I gave you a link to, uh, provide you with a little bit of information about what the tool is why you should use the tool and some alternative uses. And then we give you um, the video tutorial and a step-by-step -step tutorial. And again, you can print these out and use them or come to the website and view the videos at, at any time that you want. So to begin with, um, and, and again, the other thing you should know about the quick guides, um, <clears throat> So I'm sorry, Raymond is asking about how do I get to the phone. Let me let me see if that will work. I'm going to put this information right here, Raymond. So it's 727-398-8420 uh, and then 46138. Um, you could try that and see if if that will work for you. All right. So these quick guides, again, and, and these webinars are meant to be very quick and give you just enough information um, on a specific tool and not to spend too much time um, you know, going into all the details of it. So in this particular case, uh, again, this is the attendance tool. And, and one of the reasons we wanted to start with this particular tool is after we went through um, the pilots, uh, I kept getting a lot of phone calls and emails about how do I take attendance in, in my courses? Where do I take attendance? The first thing I'm going to tell you is that the attendance tool um, is very different than Angel. It is extremely different than Angel. And um, it's very different in the sense that when in Angel, when you went to the attendance, you know, you automatically had a bunch of dates in there. The attendance tool in my courses is a little bit more flexible where you have to define sessions and, and create what's called a register. That's what you have to do. And so what is the process for that? Well, you click on the reports tab in the nav bar. And then you click on attendance. And if you could hold on a second, let me try to get this number. So if you wanted to call in, let me try to get this number for Raymond here. So if you wanted to call in 727-398-8420. And the pin is four six one. <clears throat> so again, I clicked on reports on the nav bar, and then I clicked attendance. I then click new register. So I got to create what's called a register. The register can be named anything you want. What I'm going to show you here is what I would call a very traditional. Um, attendance. And in this particular case, I'm going to call it weekly attendance. 
Uh, I can put a cause for concern if I wanted to. In other words, I can say if the student is absent 60% of the time, it'll give me a little icon on there. So maybe I'll put that on there for you to see. The next thing I have to do is, is put down what's called different sessions. And the session names would be the dates that you're taking attendance. Um, however, I would really highly recommend you not using specific dates. And the reason I would not recommend that is because when you copy this course for next semester, what's going to happen is you're going to have to then change every single one of those dates. And so that becomes a real tedious issue. So the suggestion I have for you is if you're taking weekly attendance, is you use like week one, week two, week three. But don't spell out the whole word week one, week two, week three. And the reason for that is because if you do, then at some point when you, you won't be able to see the students who you're putting attendance in for. So what I would suggest is you use something like week one with a WK and then one. But what happens if you're teaching a face-to-face -face class and you have a class on a Monday and a class on a, on a Wednesday? Well, instead of using just week one, what I would suggest is week one and then dash one. And then you can put a description for that if you want. And then week two, uh, week one dash two. And then week two dash one. So that would be the first day. So that what, ha what happens when you do it like this is that if you move your course and you're teaching Tuesday and Thursday next, next semester, you still have you know, the first day would be Tuesday, the next day would be Thursday. Now, what do I have to do if I add more sessions? Well, I just click down here. I'm just going to go ahead and add three more. And I click Add Sessions. It'll ask me to save it first. And now what I'm oops, now what I'm going to do, make sure I put a week in there. I'm going to continue to do this week 2 dash 2 and then week 3 dash 1 and you get the idea. So what I'm building here is my weekly attendance. And I'm going to go ahead and click save. So after I have saved that, I now going to go ahead and click close. And again, I would put the whole attendance in. Now, how do I get the attendance into this weekly attendance? What I'm going to do is click on the actual register name. And this will take me into uh, the attendance area where I have my roster of my students. So this will automatically be populated once I create my sessions in here. To create, to, um, to take attendance, you click on this icon. I don't know what kind of icon with a little pencil that's next to the particular session name. And you'll get to see that I can choose uh, present, absent, uh, excused, holiday, or tardy. But what I would suggest you do is you set the status for all the users first. So click on set status for all users. I'm going to go ahead and choose present and then click save. It'll say this will take an action for all these users. Then what you want to do is change the individual students that you want. Change them to this, to tardy. I'm going to put a tardy on there because it's interesting. And then I go ahead and click Save. And I know this seems weird. It will say Save Successfully. But to get back to my attendance register, I click on the Close. And then you'll see that attendance was taken. You'll see an interesting thing that by the tardy, the tardy automatically reduces the attendance by 50%. And then because I put a 60% uh, time um, uh, to look at to see if there's a cause for concern, you can see that um, it puts this little thing in there and lets me know that there's some cause for concern. It doesn't really do anything, but what I could do right here is I could checkbox these students and I could send an email to the students right from this system also. So you'll also notice that you do get totals for every single one of these columns in here. But you also can see that if I start adding all of my weeks, 
that I would then lose my students over here in terms of if I had to scroll over to see what their attendance was on there. So that's how you do attendance. I mean, that's how you have to take attendance. You have to create a register, uh, call it what you want, and then you have to add your sessions. So if you're going to take weekly attendance within the system, this is the way to do it. I would like to just point out of a couple, and I'll bring up the quick start guide, just a couple um, alternative uses that you may not have thought of in using the um, attendance tool. Because it is flexible and it isn't just have dates on it, maybe if you're doing a project, and, and, and so I'll, I'll get to the questions in a second. Uh, so maybe if you're doing a project, you can have a group project um, attendance so that you can set in a register for this group project and have specific dates. And then you can actually take attendance for the individual groups and you would know which group was getting the stuff in on time and which wasn't. So that could be a way for you to keep track of that. How about if you're doing some mandatory chat sessions? That could be a way that you can keep a, have a register for that. So you can have more than one register. Just doing a, the weekly register you know, or the weekly attendance as a register is just one way of doing it. So now, again, I'll open it up to questions. And, and you can certainly unmute and talk. But if you want to text in, that's great. So Janice asked, do I have to create a register for each class I teach? And the answer is uh, yes and no. So yes, you do. Um, but there is a way to copy the register from one class to another. Um, when we get to um, how we copy course content over, uh, you can um, you can copy individual components um, over that. I honestly don't want to go through that process, but I would say to get with your campus IDS, and you know we will sit down with you and show you how you can do that. So if you create your register in one course, we can copy it over to multiple courses. Well, that's that's the key there. That's a good question. Janine, um, the way you really would have to do that is more than likely creating separate registers. So maybe you have a register for the first eight weeks or for the first four weeks. So maybe we would, you know, I can edit this register and call it, you know, week one to four. I know this would be more, or this is, yeah, this would be more of a pain to do, um, but I'm going to go ahead and close that. And I do not think yeah, you can't copy registers, unfortunately. Um, but you would then have to create a new one um, and then maybe do it for week five through nine. You know, so again, once these are created um, one time, and again, once you move them over to the, your other courses, uh, they do get copied from semester to semester. Does that help answer the question, Janine? Yeah, Maureen, I, I understand the problems that are having with Link that are people from outside I, of the college, and, and we're going to try to work on that and try to figure out what's going to happen with that. So we're sorry that that's happening. Are there any other questions that you may have? All right, so I guess if there's no other questions, again, this is the whole purpose of these quick guides. They're very short. We're not we're not trying to keep you too long. Um, they're targeted um, and, again, recorded. So, again, I will um, have this recording up uh, sometime today, and I will um, send an email to everyone uh, who has registered for today's session um, where you can get the link to it. I see a couple other people are typing, so I'll just hang in there for a second. All righty. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.